Hello, my name is Enrique Ortiz, and I'll be presenting our work on face recognition in movie trailers via mean sequence sparse representation based classification. The problem we would like to solve is video face recognition. The idea is that given a video, we want to extract all of the face tracks, and given a face database of still images, we input this to our system and we're able to output the correct identity, which in this case is Robert Downey Jr. In context of some of the related work, it can be divided into several different categories, one of which is keyframe based. In this scenario, what they do is they detect keyframes, classify each keyframe, and consider each as an individual vote. However, our method considers all the frames at once and makes one final decision based on the entire face track. There are also temporal based models some of which are the hidden Markov models and probabilistic models. And the idea here is that they form a temporal relationship between the frames within a face track. Two such methods actually impose a motion on a still image gallery to, to kind of learn uh, what a face track would look like. However, this is expensive and is a bit of a non-natural training method. There's also image set based matching methods. And we consider metric learning in the scenario where you actually take all of the training data, for example, of a certain of all the classes, and try to learn a metric where all of the faces of the same person are close to each other, and also maximizing the distance between the classes. However, mutual subspace learning methods will actually learn a subspace for a given face track, project the one you'd like to compare to it, and you do it in both directions. So these actually compare face tracks as a group. However, these are very sensitive to variations. And finally, of recent interest is character recognition. And in here, the, the goal is person identification. So given the face recognition, they actually supplement it using additional cues like audio and clothing, where they're able to track the person even when their face is not available. However, their face recognition techniques are actually rather simplistic. So we focus on the face recognition task and try to make it as good as possible. This is our face recognition pipeline. And the idea is that we would take as input a video and run a face detector on it. And given those detections, we want to do tracking. And we actually use two metrics for this. The first is a, an appearance-based metric where we compute a 3D color histogram for each of the, the frames, and we compute a histogram intersection between them. The next is a spatial relationship. And the idea here is that from frame to frame, a bounding box should not be moving too far from its original position in the previous frame. So there should be a very high overlap ratio. And here's an example from a given video here. For quantitative results, we actually manually annotated five movie trailers. And we look at the multiple object tracking precision and accuracy metrics. And you can see that we actually get competitive results with the, the method that's used a lot in the literature, which is a KLT-based method, which uses features tracking within the bounding boxes and the ratio of the matched features. However, our method results in a 3.5 times speed up because of the simple and easy to calcul calculate metrics. We next look at the feature extraction. And here, we're able to do eye alignment based on the eye detections given by our face detector. This is a very rough and crude alignment, so this is a place where we could improve. For feature extraction, we use three common metrics or, or features for in the face recognition community, which is the local binary patterns, histogram avoiding gradients, and the Gabor filters. We apply PCA to each individual feature using and keep about 512 dimensions, and we concatenate them into one long feature vector of 1536 dimension. This is inputted to our method, mean sequence SRC, and we, uh, which I'll explain a little bit more in the subsequent slides. To give a little background, sparse representation takes the assumption that given a test frame, it can be linearly represented by some of the f frames in the, the dictionary, specifically the frames to which its identity belongs. So in this case, this is the first row. And the idea here is that there should be few non-zeros for the frames that you actually be belong to or correspond to, and zero for the rest. 
So idea is that given a test frame and a linear uh, a dictionary of frames, we want to learn the linear representation while emphasizing sparsity of the coefficient vector x. So the standard formulation reduces or minimizes the residual error between the test frame and the dictionary while emphasizing sparsity. However, in our scenario, we have multiple frames within a face track. So we make two crucial assumptions. The first is that the frames are highly correlated, which means that all the frames within this face track are of the same person, and they are actually very visually similar. Next, we make the, the strong assumption that they should agree on a common coefficient vector. And what, just this, what this means is that they will be linear represented by the same vectors within the dictionary. Mathematically, we expand the, the previous formulation to include all the frames from the face track, where we sum the residual error over all the face tracks, while still emphasizing the sparsity of the coefficient vector. Now, if we were to look at this equation more closely, and we look at the first part here, we can expand it out with the mean. Using the linear alg algebraic expression as shown on the screen here, we can look at the central part here, and you expand it out, and you'll find that it's actually the mean minus the mean, which goes to zero. Next, we look at what remains. What remains is a constant. So in the minimization, this is not important. And finally, this results in the final formulation, which is the standard L1 minimization, but over the mean vector. For classification, we actually look at the per class residual error uh, with respect to the mean and find the minimum to be the class that it belongs to. And the confidence is computed using the sparsity concentration index. What this means is that if it's a good approximation, the coefficient should be concentrated on one class, whereas if it's not a good approximation, it will be distributed across multiple or all of the classes. Here we introduce the movie trailer face data set. We collected 101 movie trailers, as shown on the screen here. From these, we ran our face tracking, and we obtained 4,485 face tracks. And here are some examples. Of these 4,485 total tracks, 1,552 tracks are from people in the dictionary. Our dictionary is made up of the public figures data set, which is freely available on the internet. We supplemented it with 10 additional public figures to get a better coverage over the identities in the movies. And on the left, you see the distribution of these about 1,600 face tracks across the 210 classes. And as you can see, there are a few, or at least half of them, that aren't represented. So you actually have a set of people that you're looking for that aren't in the movies that we're looking at. This translates to about 7.4 tracks per person on average. And here are some qualitative results. Here, Paul Rudd and Steve Carell are the people of interest. You can see that it was able to accurately label the unknowns and label people, uh, multiple people at once. In this clip, you can see that Steve Carell and Tina Fey are the main actors, and there will be a few unknowns. However, in a part of this, at the end of this clip here, you'll see that it misclassifies them as unknown. And this is largely to do with the fact that their faces are sideways, and could be, so our method could benefit from better alignment. Here you can see some classification, correct classifications of unknowns. And this is our final clip. For quantitative results, we look at several methods. The first is a nearest neighbor based approach. And here what we do is we classify each frame using nearest neighbor. And we do voting, uh, max, maximum voting here. And the average, we show average precision and the recall percentage at 90% precision. Here we use SVM in a similar fashion where we classify each frame and take max voting. And you see that's a very large increase in precision recall. Next we use LDML, which is a metric learning method for the training gallery to project the data into a space that's better for classification. 
However, we find that metric learning suffers in this case because of the domain transfer, where the still image gallery doesn't necessarily transfer well to the, the motion information. Next, we use an L2 approximation, which does away with the, the sparsity constraint. And you can see it still does pretty well. However, when we introduce the sparsity constraint using sparse representation on a single frame, you can see that average precision drops considerably, especially the recall at high precision. Next, we do SRC for every frame and do max voting. And there's another increase in average precision. And finally, our method results in the highest increase in average position and recall at high precision. We see that it does even better than the voting technique because it's able to, um, in the averaging, it actually averages out some of the errors in, in the data. Next, we're going to show some results on already publicly available data sets. The first is the YouTube Faces data set. The YouTube Faces data set is actually a face ver verification data set where we want to classify same versus not same. And they give 5,000 video pairs, half same, half not same, and divide into 10 folds with 500 pairs each. Our field of interest is actually face identification, and not only that, it's open universe face identification. So our method isn't specifically tuned for verification, but we wanted to show that it's able to do well in this scenario as well. And we find, here are some examples from the same and the not same. And our method is actually competitive with the best currently published method. Next we show the Buffy data set. And it has 639 manually annotated face tracks, 312 for training, and 327 for testing. And here are some ex examples. Our method gets a, a slight improvement over the currently best method here. For the YouTube celebrities data set, there are 47 celebrities, which is about 1,910 video clips in total, which is approximately 41 clips per person. We have three training and six testing for, per person. And here are some examples. And our results have about a 6% improvement over the best uh, currently published method. So in summary, we present a complete end-to-end -end system from face tracking to recognition of those face tracks. We provide a new movie trailer face data set. We present an improved face tracker. And we show that we obtain state-of-the-art performance on open universe face identification, which means that we do really well not only identifying, but also rejecting unknowns. Thank you, and please visit my website um, shown on the screen for more information.